Hello YouTubers, my name is Eggy and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Michael from 7 Heavenly Virtues. It is a resin kit from E2046 and on today's video, I am going to show you how I built this. The resin kit is different from a usual plastic kits. Please understand that there is a health issue if resin dust is inhaled. If you are building a resin kit, Please use a well-ventilated room with a proper personal protection gear like a mask. First, I start the build by inspecting each part. E2046 includes parts lists with pictures, so I spread out each part and match them with pictures. E2046 kit also comes with one picture of the finished kit, which I use for color guide. That being said, one picture does not help and some internet search was required. Once parts were inspected, all the tests were cut out using a pair of side cutters and were filed to a smooth finish. Once all the parts were free of large tabs, I assembled them together without any glue to see how they fit together. I also used blue tag on some parts so they can be held together. This pre-assembly allows me to plan ahead and learn how to assemble the final product and also shows me if there are any problematic parts. In this case, some heat bending was required on small parts, but all parts fit together without any large issues. Pin the large parts next. Pinning is used between two parts to give some strength and structural rigidity by inserting a metal rod between the parts. Some people like pinning and magnets on every part, but I only use them to improve the connection and improve the structural rigidity on the finished kit. For example, on my previously built resin kit, Momoka, it had a large and heavy hair, so it needed several metal pins on her body and on her hair so the finish kit doesn't fall backward. The pre-assembly I did before usually tells me where and which parts needs improvement, and in this case, I only need it in the main body and to the base because it is a well-balanced kit. After all the parts has been cleaned and pinned, I wash them to get rid of oils and mold release that are present on the surface. They get in the way when painting and good surface prepping is a must for worry-free paint job. I use warm water mixed with either soap or detergent. The water needs to be warm enough to open up the pores on a resin, which can hold the oil, but not hot enough to bend and soften up the resin part. parts are washed and dried, I paint them with a gray badger primer with my airbrush. The gray color allows me to see the imperfection that I may have missed during the initial inspection due to the resin's white color. The badger primer is also a sandable primer, meaning once I finish the session that needs to be correcting, I can send them without primer peeling off or leaving a crater where it's hard to fix. After parts has been sanded, I spray the badger primer again and double check make sure that everything is good. Honestly, I did this at least 5 times on this kit and I still miss some of the parts.
I started painting with her skin color first. I first used the white as a base paint, and over the base paint, I applied several shades of skin color. I believe I used at least five different shades. This takes longer to paint, however, the end result is that the skin tone looks very realistic. For her underwear, I use masking tape and liquid mask to mask the skin part, which will prevent overspray to get on the painted part. I first painted the underwear with a gray paint and used a white paint as a highlight, giving it a nice shaded look. The original character wears a striped underwear, so I use a masking tape to create a stripe pattern and spray some gray paints on it. Once the all masking tape and liquid mask has been removed, I got the desired striped underwear. the rest of the stuff, I use a shading technique where I apply the darker shade first and then use the base color as a highlight. I use this technique on most of her clothing and the end result came out great.
I also painted the small details like her gold trim using a Vallejo acrylic paint with a paintbrush. As for some of the gold parts, I'll apply some brown wash on them to give it some more depth. For the eyes, I usually include the water slide decals. This decal was not a pre-cut decal, so I had to cut the parts out using the X-Acto knife as close as possible and apply them using water. I also gave it some decal softer to melt the decals to the surface. I also gave more shading on some parts using pastel shading technique. I did this on her skin and on her clothes, which gave it a nice and subtle shading. That being said, this technique can also ruin the kit by making it look dirty rather than giving a shaded look. Once everything is done, I seal the paint using a varnish. This is especially important if you did pastel shading because the pastel can come off when you're handling it and that varnish will protect it. Once all the parts are painted and paint secured, I assemble the parts together using a super glue while being careful not to ruin the paint job with the glue. And here is the finished kit. I enjoy this build. E2046 did a great job casting this kit with a high quality resin that requires very minimal correction. Most of the tasks were located and easy to get to spot and they were easy to file and send. Only few parts required a correction such as heat bending. Overall, I recommend this kit. Thank you for watching this video. I'll put a link down below to my blog where you can find more pictures. Please hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe because on my next Let's Build series, I'll be building this. Yeah.